Let's learn how we can type array types, function types, and objects. So in TypeScript, there's two equivalent ways to specify an array type. So we can use generic syntax or we can use the type bracket boy syntax we've seen before. So let me get into an example. So you can say Pokemon one, and then we can use the generic because array is the built-in type and we can just say string. So this is a generic and then we can pass it an array. Let me just copy this over for convenience. And then the second method, we can say Pokemon 2, and we can use the one we've seen so far, and we can copy over the same thing. So which one you use really depends on you. There isn't a right or wrong way. Some people argue that this first you have to read this is a string, and then you read this is an array. So maybe this is easier to read because you immediately see, hey, this is an array generic and it has string values inside. And of course, later we're going to learn about type aliases and interfaces. So for example, if you have an interface Pokemon, we can just pass it Pokemon or whatever we want inside here. And we're going to explore that in a bit. But yeah, let's see how we can type out functions. So let me just delete that. So you can specify the input and output type of functions as we've seen before. So for example, let's say we have Pokemon. It's an array of strings and it's empty in this case. So one thing worth noting is that sometimes you want to be really explicit as I had an example before. So for example, let's say we have an interface Pokemon and we have some types inside here. Uh, if we just remove this and if you hover over the value, TypeScript would infer Pokemon as any, but maybe you want to have a default empty array and you want to type it out. So you can say, for example, that it should be Pokemon and it should be an array of Pokemon. Or as we have in this example, this can be a string. But yeah, this is when you want to be explicit about the type and not let TypeScript infer it. So we can say function add Pokemon. So again, the arguments of a function you can type out and then you can say the return type, same as before. And then you can say Pokemon push name and then you want to return all the Pokemon, for example. Yes, so we can say add Pokemon, and then you can say Pikachu, and everything is going to work fine. Let's see how you type anonymous functions. So we can go here, and this is the same deal, so we can keep this. Yeah, so let's just do const add Pokemon. We can say name string, and again, return type array of strings. And we can just say, same as before, Pokemon push name, return Pokemon. And that's it. That's really not much difference. The only difference is later when we learn about type aliases and how we can add types and make them more reusable, how regular functions and arrow functions differ in that way. But let's talk about another thing that's really TypeScript's contextual typing, which might sound complicated, but it's not. It's really actually the opposite. It's about removing complexity. So if we look at this example, in this example, we should let TypeScript infer the type. So let me just go here and remove this. So we can say Pokemon list, we can say Bulbasaur, Charmander, Squirtle, right? And then let's say you want to loop over them or whatever. So you say Pokemon list, Pokemon, console of Pokemon or whatever you want. So maybe your instinct is, actually, let me just <laughs> add a for each, right? That's kind of important, right? So maybe your instinct is, if you're unfamiliar with TypeScript, that you have to go in here and then you also have to specify this type, but no, just let TypeScript do the hard work. TypeScript is smart enough to infer this from the Pokemon list type. So you can just say Pokemon. And if you hover over the Pokemon list, it's usually it's inferred as an array of strings. And if we hover over this value here, it knows it's a string. How awesome is that? So imagine if you have a more complex type if you have an array of them, TypeScript is going to infer what the individual type is. And that's really awesome. So let TypeScript do the hard work so you don't have to be explicit about the type inside here. So let's look how we can pass function arguments that are optional using the question mark operator. So for example, if we have a function log Pokemon, maybe the name is required and then the HP is optional. So we can say question mark number and then we can console log name HP. And let's look at that. So we can say log Pokemon Pikachu, which is great. And then we can say log Pokemon again, Pikachu 35. And let's say it's optional as we did it before, but if we remove it here, this one is going to complain how it's required. 
expected two arguments but got one an argument for hp was not provided and it even tells you what you need to pass in how awesome is that so let's look at another thing i never probably used but i really want to make you aware of it so there's this concept in other languages about function overloading and that's basically the function overloading is the ability to create multiple functions of the same name with different implementations so based on what arguments you pass it's going to be a different function right so in javascript there is no function overloading because we can pass any number of parameters of any type and then we perform checks inside the function so yeah so like this we have a log pokemon function and then we do if blah 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 so maybe we can go for this example together so let's say function log pokemon we're going to take one argument take the second argument then let's have some check if type of argument one is string and type of r is a number, then we can do something else with it. So we can say, just use the backticks here. So you can say arg1 has arg2 hp. And then we can do something different based on if argument1 is an object, then we can destructure some values from it. We can say name hp from arg1 and then we can say console log let me use backticks say name actually have to use curly boys yes hp hp so yeah that's how we usually do it in javascript right we can do different things based on what the argument was passed in so we can say log pokemon pikachu let's give it 35 hp Log Pokemon, also look at our wonderful completion. It's really not <laughs> type safe exactly, but yeah, Pikachu. Then you can give it HP 35. So the difference is we passed in a string and a number, and here we're passing an object inside. And it's complaining because TypeScript doesn't know the type, but let me just log out these values. If I go here and I can run npxds node and this should, let me just see, an argument was not provided. Yeah, so for example, we can just say any, any, let me just save this, I'm going to clear the console. Oh, also, I'm silly, let's just make one optional. So let's see, it complains about argument two, and this time it should work 100%. So yeah, Pikachu has 35 HP and Pikachu has 35 HP. And that's really how you would usually do it. But let's see how we can use function overloading. So TypeScript has overload signatures that let you call a function in different ways. And first let's start with a type. We haven't learned interfaces yet, but it's really just an object that describes value. So you can say name string HP number. So this is the function overload part. So we can say function log pokemon so we can declare different <laughs> function types we can say name string hp number it returns void and then we can say function log pokemon we can say pokemon object and the type should be pokemon our interface right and i'm going to say void doesn't return anything but this time we're going to type it out and use function overload. So we can say function log Pokemon. So arg1 is going to be unknown. arg2, which is optional, should also be unknown. And it's going to return nothing. Yeah, so let's do it again. So we can say if type of arg1 string and type of arg2 is a number. Then we can console log, let's use backticks. We can say arg1 has arg2 hp. And then we can do our other signature. So you can say type of arg1, it's an object. So the same as before, we can destructure name and hp from it arg1. And we can use type assertion, we can say that arg1 is Pokemon. And then we can log it out. So we can say name has HP. Yeah, and this is it. So let's really see what the beauty of this is. So for example, if I start typing log Pokemon, let's press enter and then pay attention to this. Ah, oh, so 
what is this wonderful thing? So look at how smart TypeScript and your editor is in working together. So we can see what the possible signatures for this is. If you have a function, that can be many different things. So function overloading is really cool. I don't think I ever use it or ever use it, but just so you're aware of it and how awesome it is. So let's summarize. So we broke two overload signatures for log Pokemon. The first overload signature accepts name and HP arguments. The second overload signature accepts a Pokemon object argument. After that, we wrote a function implementation with a compatible signature where we made the second argument optional. So if I go here, here is our overload signature and here we made the second one optional. And then we made a check if arg is string and arg2 is a number, we know it matches the first signature and then we went ahead and said if arg1 is an object, we know it matches the second signature so we can use type assertion and the structure the values from it. So lastly, let's look at object types. So the object type is like a regular object in JavaScript. So let's see the infer type again, which we've seen across this series a couple of times. So Pokemon inferred type, we can see name Pikachu. And then if you hover over it, we can see that TypeScript inferred the type, which is wonderful. But as I said before, we can also be explicit. We can say Pokemon X, if I can type, <laughs> explicit type. Awesome. So you can say it's an object, which is a name property and has a string type. And then we can say name Pikachu. So these things are equivalent. And we also talked about when you want to be explicit or not. So I hope that makes more sense. So in the next example, we can see how TypeScript is missing optional and extra object properties. So if we go here, we can say const Pokemon missing property. So we can give it a type It's going to be an object ID number name is going to be a string. And that object is going to have name Pikachu. And yeah, so if we hover over it, this is going to say property ID is missing in type name string, but required in type ID where the number is and the name is string. And you really need to get used to reading these errors because probably the worst part about TypeScript are the error messages. This one is fine, but you're going to encounter <laughs> more puzzling and confusing error messages, but it makes sense in most cases after you learn what TypeScript wants from you, right? So let's do a uh, optional argument. Pokemon optional argument. So again, we can say that ID is optional, number, name, string, and then if we say name Pikachu. This isn't going to complain because ID is optional. And for example, in your editor, you can press control space to get auto completion. And you can say, oh, okay, so these are the values that it gives me. And this is really awesome when you're dealing with the library. Prisma, for example, is really awesome with this. So you can say ID and then whatever. But yeah, let me just remove this. Then let's look at how objects may only specify known properties. So we can say const Pokemon extra property. Again, we can say ID number name string, same deal. Yeah, so we can say ID one, say name Pikachu. And this is fine, but what if we have an extra property that doesn't exist? Pokemon type electric. If we hover over the error, it says type ID. And you can see how these errors can get really gnarly. So the best course of action is start with the bottom one or just scroll at the bottom. So it says object literal may only specify known properties and Pokemon type does not exist in type, blah, blah, blah. And this is also more verbose because it's using this entire type, but we're going to learn later how you can use type aliases and interfaces to make our types more readable. So catch you in the next one.